job. So many questions and so many mistakes that Calgary drivers are making over and over again, whether it's about the roundabout or the correct way to make a legal U-turn. We invite Staff Sergeant Paul Stacy to the program to explain the road rules that many of us are unsure of. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Jill. We had a lot of debate back and forth during yeah. our production meeting, and I imagine that uh, you get these questions as well. So let's mm -hmm. dig right in, mm -hmm. and we'll start with the confusing roundabouts. Mm -hmm. What are the rules of the roundabout? First of all, roundabouts, I love them and I hate them at the same time. Right. I, I love them because they reduce uh, collisions and the severity, but uh, a lot of people don't understand them. Uh, there's one simple rule about roundabouts, and this is in the Traffic Safety Act. You have to yield to the vehicle on your left, always. That's the only rule. That's the only rule. That's the only rule. Now, when you're on the inside lane, yeah. what is your right of way? Your right of way is you're allowed to go and make your right turn. It's the person. If the outside lane is yielding to the left. Yeah. No. Yes. No. Now, when you say inside outside, you're talking about the one closest to the center as being the inside. Exactly. Yes. The one on the outside has to yield to the vehicle on the left. Always yield to the vehicle on your left that's in the traffic circle. Ah. It's so as that's simple how people as that. can get stuck. And I and I wish people would signal more in traffic circles. Oh. Okay. So signaling is well, totally acceptable. It, well, signaling is great. Necessary. Because, yes, because that keeps the flow going. Otherwise, people don't know what you're doing. Always signal. Yeah. That Mackenzie roundabout, yes. is it the busiest in Calgary? It probably is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the first major roundabouts that we have. We're getting more and more of them in the city. And like I say, for good reason, it keeps the flow going and it reduces the severity of crashes if there is one. Yes. So people really need to uh, wrap their heads around how to get through them. Okay, the one rule and signal that is helpful for everyone. Yeah. U-turns, legal yes. or not? It depends. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go over the places where you can't do a U-turn, and then that'll tell you where you can do them. Okay. You can't do them in between intersections, at alleyways, at traffic lights, or any intersection uh, that has a sign saying you can't do it, obviously. Right. Or at the opening of, a, say, a shopping center or a mall or something like that. Aha. Uh -huh. So what does that leave? <laughs> well, uh, pretty much any other intersection. Right. As long as it's done at, at an intersection. You can't do it between intersections. So at a residential intersection, for example, let's say a four-way stop, yep. that would be acceptable? No problem. Unless it's marked otherwise. That's right. Okay. Or any unmarked intersection. Correct. Got it. Yep. Okay, so we've got U-turns that we're able to do some some circumstances. Okay, yep. one ways and turning. Yep. Can you turn left from a one way to a one way from the far lane? It depends. Uh, always from the curb lane you can. Yes. But it really depends on what the traffic signals let you do. So if you're coming up on a one way onto a one way, and say you're in the the lane next to the curb lane, you cannot turn onto the one-way unless there's a sign indicating that that lane uh, is allowed to turn as well. Otherwise, you have to go straight. Oh, I see. But you can turn if you stop at a red light uh, and, you know, you yield to your pedestrians and the other vehicles, you are allowed to make a left turn onto a one-way on a red. Got if it. If you're on a one-way. Okay, really quickly, I'm going to yep. throw a pedestrian question yep. in there. Does the pedestrian need to have cleared the intersection before you're allowed to cross that intersection? No. You have to yield to the, to the pedestrian. Now, the, the law doesn't state clearly about the curb to curb. It, in fact, it doesn't state that at all. So you need to be reasonable when I say yield to the pedestrian. Yes. So you don't have to wait for the pedestrian to get from one curb to the other curb. Some people do, and that's fine. That's just prudent, and that's okay. It only takes another 10 seconds right, anyway. Right, right. But you don't have to. But you do have to. You're not allowed to pass another vehicle that has stopped at a crosswalk waiting for a pedestrian. You're not allowed to pass that vehicle going okay. in the same direction. I didn't know that. I thought you had to wait curb to curb. Okay, a that's a good one. That, yeah. Distracted driving, yes. it's a huge issue, yeah. and uh, when and where it counts. So how about at a drive through You cannot. Uh, drive throughs are considered parking lots, and under the Traffic Safety Act, that is considered a highway. And I, I have a quick story about a drive through yes. I was behind a lady in a Tim Hortons drive through and I watched, and she looked like maybe she and her husband, perhaps, uh, probably in their 50s, she's on her phone. And so I, I notice these things, so I'm sitting behind her waiting to go through, and I'm noticing that. And uh, uh, there was a lady in front of her, and it looked like a brand new SUV. The lady that was on her phone, uh, you know, we're creeping through, and for whatever reason, she's looking down, she smashed right into the back of the lady in front of her. Uh -oh. She gets out, she says, I don't know what happened, I don't know what happened. I s so I, I couldn't help myself. I yelled out my window, I said, it's because you're on your phone. <laughs> and, and that, 
I mean, that just tells you how distracted people are. Yes. The lady stopped right in front of her. She knew she was there, but she still hit the back of her. So the lady that got hit, she was a little perturbed because it was a brand new vehicle. Of course. And, yeah. you know, you, you think that you're going slow through a drive through but still yeah. that, that impact You don't expect to be rear-ended in a drive through Totally. Yeah. Okay. How about Andrew Schultz's question, which is consulting directions when you're driving? If you glance at a piece of paper, does that qualify as distracted driving? It can be. Mm -hmm. It can be, but... It, it depends. Uh, I mean, you know what? Uh, there's some gray area in the law and some reasonableness. The intent and the spirit of the law is to ensure that your attention's on the road. Now, no different than if you uh, take a look at your GPS that you've pre-programmed. If you have a, a sheet with some directions on it, you're driving, you take a quick glance, that'll be acceptable. Sure. Okay, you just have to be careful. Really quickly, yeah. can I, I just want to ask about the zipper merge. Yes. And do you recommend that people go ahead to the merge or do you fold in? Well, I, I saw the, the study from AMA saying that if people go to the end, uh, it actually increases the flow of traffic. So, I, you know, uh, I'll have to default to their study. If, if uh, they've proven that that's the case, well, then I accept it. That's uh, probably the better way to go. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Right. Uh, lots of things clarified here this morning. We will be posting this online if you need to reconsult. Thank you, Paul, for joining us You're this welcome. morning. Uh, I think a lot of questions answered. Signal, signal, signal in those <laughs> roundabouts.